Lime. Brought to you by Kellogg's, the folks who bring the best to you each morning, the widest choice of cereals in the forms you like best. Yours from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? Now let's meet our award-winning panel of What's My Line. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you. And now a gentleman who brings his Gallic charm to the new Broadway hit, The Second String, the irresistible Jean-Pierre Omar. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on my left will be that wonderful and lovely journalist who is leaving in a few hours, and as a matter of fact, has been one of the very few Americans to be invited to the royal wedding in London, Dorothy Kilgallen. I would like to warn the Middle West universities in particular that a treat is in store for them because all next week our Random House panelist will be visiting universities in the Midwest. And here he is now, Bennett Sir. Yeah! Joint is jumping tonight. And uh, here's our gentleman with the velvet whip, the Marquis de Sade of panel moderators, <laughs> John Charles Dale. Yeah! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What's My Line. Jean-Pierre Aumont, it's nice to have you with us tonight. Thank you. So that we can see if we can swarm you like we do the rest of the panel, at least we hope we will tonight. Smother you in a whole set of no answers. We've got some very interesting occupations, and we also have a famous mystery guest a little bit later in the show. We'll meet our first challenger after this word. And now let's meet our first challenger, please. Will you come in and sign in? Gloria? Gloria Bale, is that right? Uh, Miss or Mrs. Bale? Miss. Miss Bale, and where are you from? London, England. Oh, but you're here in the, in the United States for a, yes. a while now? I'm living in the United States. You're living States. in the United States? Oh, well, fine. Nice to have you with us. May I present our panel? Miss Bale, will you join me over here, please? Do you know how we keep score, Miss Bale? Yes, I do. In that event, let's let the audience that's joined us in the theater and those who are watching at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, under the new rules, we will tell you that Miss Bale is salaried and that she deals in services. And let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Mrs. Ba Miss Bale, is there anything creative in what you do? Yes. Would you say that you are associated with the arts in some way? Uh, mm. Don't answer the question, because actually I think here creative tends to be used specifically with reference to the arts. And I would say that the answer to the first one, while properly yes, in the terms that Miss Bale does, uh, of her own volition, take and plan and uh, execute and things like that. It, yes. It's creative in a sense, but not in the sense, I think, that is generally applied. Were you trying to take a long way around to give me a no, John? No, I was taking no. a long way around to give you a qualified no, so you could Thank go you. on. Thank you. Uh, does writing have anything to do with your uh, profession, Miss Bale? No. That's the question I thought you might <laughs> ask. One down and nine to go, Mr. Ramon. <laughs> Um, does what you do bring any happiness to people? Yes. Does it bring it to both um, women and men? Yes. Uh, do they go toward you to uh, get that happiness? <laughs> yes. 
Uh, do you receive them usually in an office? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, would you say that you do not work in an office? No. Primarily. Do you, however, work indoors? Yes. More than outdoors? Yes. Uh, would you say that you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. Uh, is anything sold at this particular place? No. Small conference. No. Excuse me, yes. Uh, however, would you say that it was not properly called, it would not be properly called a shop? No. That you work in? Right. Some yes, other, you would say. It's some other type. But the people who come in see you and perhaps speak to you? No. They don't speak to you. No. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Bale, would you have anything to do with food or drink? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Is the place in which you work a large place, other, unlike an office? Would it be considered yes. a large building? Yes. Would it be a building as large as a hotel? As large as a hotel? Mm. Hotels a come in hotel. various sizes. A small yes. hotel, yeah. Mm. Yes, I think that would cover enough ground. To... Like the size of an inn, perhaps. Well, inns come All in right. various sizes, yes. too. All right. Anyway, both men and women can come to you for your service, whatever yes. it is. Do you ever touch them? No. That's five down and five to go, Mr. Romo. Uh, does the thing you do only exist in America? No. Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, now, if they go to you and they don't speak to you or they don't see you... No, we didn't say that. What did you say? It was a combined question and one part of it required a negative answer, oh. so you've got a complete negative. Well, uh... Oh, I said d they don't speak to her and she doesn't speak to them. You mean you'd like me to split it up and get my no that way? Well, you can. All right. <laughs> Do you speak to them? No. no, that's right. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Bale, you being English and with a wedding coming up in England this week, I wonder if, have you anything whatever to do with the holy state of matrimony? No. That's eight okay. down and two to go, Miss Francis. Do you have anything to do with wearing apparel of any kind, modeling of any kind? No. no. Nine down and one to go, Mr. Romo. Uh, does the thing you do uh, happen in England? Yes, it happens in England. It happens yes. in England. Uh, does it happen uh, in every single country? Yes, I think so. Well, yes. I can think of one or two aboriginal lands where it might oh, not, no. but I think <laughs> that your answer was general enough, question was general enough, yes. so we can do it general yet. You may have 30 seconds for a conference. Uh, could we consider this, uh, Arlene, some therapy? Uh, the fact that they speak to her, but she doesn't speak to them, and she doesn't touch them. That's Do you right. think it would be valuable to know if she sees them? What, what sort of a service could that be if they speak to her, and then as a result of that, something happens to make them happier? Maybe she's inside of a mechanical chess player. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can see I, I was no, no idea, help. No, I have no Does, I have still one more question, yeah. don't I? Mm -hmm. Uh, does it um, have to do with transportation? No. No, not. There's a good deal of transportation yes, of one kind is. and another in it, but it has nothing rocket. to do with transportation no. because Miss Bale is a trapeze artist and one of the best. Beg pardon, Bennett? Ringling Brothers Circus? With yes. Ringling Brothers yes. Circus, presently at Madison Square Garden. Oh, uh, yeah. And I must say, this was very well executed. You see, normally when the circus first comes to town, they're all on the Kiwi to find somebody from the circus, but we put them to sleep this time because the circus has been here for a little while. And we therefore start the evening splendidly. We stuck the panel, and thank you very much. You were a charming guest. <laughs> I might add that uh, Miss Bale works all alone on the high trapeze, and she's only 17 years old. Wow. I haven't worked on the high trapeze myself since I was 19. Wow. <laughs> Let's see what we can do with another challenger. Would you come in and sign in, please? <laughs> Chick. Chick Gaylord, is that right? Yes. 
the, uh, the check come from? Is that uh, Charles? Yeah, Charles. Charles That's Gaylord? Right. Mm -hmm. nice. Where are you from, sir? Uh, New York City. New York City. Well, then, our panel will be familiar to you. Okay. Gaylord, will you join me over here, please? You know how we keep score, sir? Yes, I do. All right, then we'll let the audience and the theater and those at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, Mr. Gaylord is self-employed, deals in a product, and we'll begin things with uh, Mr. Sir. No relation of Gaylord Ravenel, Mr. Gaylord. <laughs> no. <laughs> Mr. Gaylord, the product in which that is with which you are involved, might that be in the food or drink line? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Friend. Is it a product used by both sexes? Yes. Would it be considered a useful product? Yes. Uh, is I it would say if you were interested in it, you'd think of it as very useful. Yeah. <laughs> is it a product used on special occasions for special people? <laughs> That's a little bit rough. I would say that it's a, a product used on special occasions for special people. I, while I would agree that you might feel that the people who used it normally had a special, special character, I think they would not use it only on a special occasion, so we give her no. <laughs> That's a wonderful idea. All right. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Romo. <clears throat> uh, is it the product you, uh, we find in the, our houses? You could. Usually. Uh, in uh, any particular room of uh, our that, houses? That, uh, in any particular room in the house? No, I don't think so. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Gaylord, is this product solid rather than liquid? It's solid, yes. Uh, is it ever used by or on people who are in a little trouble? Uh, is it ever used as punishment or restraint? Well, <laughs> I would think that we might have to agree that just taking all the terms that uh, the question poses, there is a connection there, wouldn't you think? It's possible. Yes, it's possible. Uh, is this something that you would not normally give a child to play with? Uh, not something you would not normally give a child? No, I would say no to that. That makes it four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Is there any metal in this product? Sometimes. Sometimes. It is the product used in any way on the human body? Is it used on the human body? Yes. I think we could loosely describe it as being used on the human body. If it's used on the human body, is it used generally above the waist? I would say sometimes. sometimes. Is it used uh, above the chest? Sometimes. Sometimes. Does that mean that it's... Wait a minute. Let me call a halt here. Wait a second. You knock it in. Bennett, we'll be quite frank with you. There's a technical question involved here. We'll give you a yes and no to above the chest. Ho, oh, ho, oh, Bennett. Oh, that makes everything <laughs> right, very simple. Uh, if, when this is worn, is it visible to outsiders? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Call me the Marquis de Gassard, does, will you, uh, is, does this, uh, is this product ever used uh, to hold something in? <laughs> yeah. I think we could say that this is a product that is sometimes used to hold something in, yes. Is it sometimes used above the neck? Above the neck? <laughs> That's five down and five to go, Miss Preston. <clears throat> is it, you say there is some metal in this? It, sometimes. Sometimes. 
Is there some padding of some kind also in this? Some padding of some kind? Material? Had one of these things? Sometimes. Uh, are you strapped into it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, would it keep you reasonably firm if it was on you? I would say we would <laughs> we would have to agree that those portions of the anatomy to which it was strapped or applied would tend to be kept firm, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. Well, is it uh, is it something like a straitjacket of some kind? No. no. That's six down and four to go, Mr. Omar. Uh, does it help uh, to um, speak or to hear better? Does it help to speak or to hear better? Mm. Is it connected with the... Uh, no, the no, Jean-Pierre, we can't... So we've got to give you a no on that. Seven thousand three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Gaylord, would this product be used more by women than by men? No. No, that's eight down and two to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Gaylord, might this product be slapped on or plastered on? <laughs> <laughs> I want to go, Miss Francis. Does it hold something, this product? Yes. Can you put something in this product apart from yourself? Yes. Could you put a... Could you put a... <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, an outside thing could go into this uh, sort of jacket strap. <laughs> Is it something other than a baby or a revolver? No. No. That's no. That's oh, I asked it wrong. No. <laughs> it must be a holster of some Right, Ali. <laughs> Well, that's what um, you call winning by a nose. That's absolutely right. Mr. Gaylord has his own business in New York, and he specializes actually in concealment and fast draw holsters. Oh, I'd you know, like one of those. This guy. <laughs> don't, don't you strap on a holster? We said you did. They yeah. said yes. Oh, they we did. answered all the questions when correctly. I, said, strapped a plastic, I feel said sorry no. for the people out in Wisconsin and Minnesota and Missouri <laughs> and Michigan. <laughs> don't lock the children up. Bennett's coming. Let them get out and have a good look at them. We had a wonderful time, thanks to you, sir. A wonderful guest, and hope you enjoy it. I've always wanted to send Bennett out on one of these hijiras of his with no answers right for the previous Sunday evening. I think we're going to make it tonight. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity for which my friends, as you all know, blindfold themselves. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. Good, will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. That's basically, Jean-Pierre, to put you on notice that things do change in this round of questioning. And we'll begin it all with um, Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you a performer of any kind? Well, yeah, I guess you'll say I'm interested in the performing arts. Yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> Mr. Sir? Uh, have you ever starred in motion pictures? Mm. Occasionally, yes. Was that yes? That was a French, occasionally, yes. No, occasionally, I've no, done this. No, that's not French. <laughs> no, no, in motion picture. You mean the, the film, ah. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I just don't know part of, you, are, you are talking about the screen. Yes. Yes, Miss Francis? Are you in a picture that is presently playing on Broadway? 
No, no, you, no, 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 it's impossible. Oh, well, I know that you're Broadway. No, 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 no. Well, Broadway covers an awful lot of ground. I think it's I highly possible. I didn't mean possible. the Broadway area. You wipe the ground, yeah. underground the or the on top of the ground. The well, some, the subways are not what as good as upstairs. Yeah, I know, but I mean, downstairs, I'm a very big star. Downstairs? <laughs> a very, very big star. star. I always sit in the balcony. Mr. Omont, please. Have you already been on the stage in Broadway? Well, since you mentioned it, I mean, you know, uh, I've appeared once or twice. Yes, uh, that's the way you feel about it. I mean, it's up to you to decide. Miss <laughs> Kilgallen. Uh, are you American-born? I mean, United States of America. No, 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 Mr. Kilgallen, no, I'm not. I just have nothing to do with the United States of America. What? <laughs> the answer was no, Dorothy. Uh, Mr. Cerf. Uh, were you an English citizen at the time of your birth? Citizen of Great Britain? Shortly after he was born, he so became. Matter of fact, no, 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 yeah. not at all. No, nothing to do with that country at all. Oh, my what? God. What? Wait a minute, we've got to have a country. Oh, good show. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. <laughs> Well, nevertheless, have you appeared in English pictures? Well, sometimes, yes. Uh, English picture, uh, Italian picture. Uh, I was... Italian <laughs> picture, and uh, you, you are sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Umbo? Well, are you by any chance... Have you by any chance ever visited a room at the top? Well, in my time, I've been in many rooms. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's the top, it's the bottom, it's the uh, everywhere. Lawrence Harvey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when he hates David about uh, <laughs> Indians. Born in England. I think you're absolutely awful. Born, <laughs> born where? Lithuania. Actually, and Bennett, don't feel, because I was thrown by this too. I, I just always thought of Lawrence Harvey as being born in England. And when he said no, no it shook me up a bit. Too. Do you know if I'd known Lithuania, it wouldn't have helped me much? <laughs> would it? It would have helped him. You mean it wouldn't have helped at all? Not a bit. Oh. Now, quite seriously, I really was born in Lithuania and went to South Africa, and I've only been living in England <laughs> since uh, 1946. Well, you're just like John. Did you grow up in South Africa? John Gilgood, yes, he's a... Uh, well, no, uh, John Daly. <laughs> <laughs> All of Just this, you went to South here. Africa? I went to South Africa, yes, and I fought the South African government. I know, it wasn't there. Wait, it wasn't the reason why I went there. Um, I went to South Africa in 1934. I'd I was left. brought up there. I'd left by then. Oh, you, you were really gone. Yes. Well, you left. That's why I missed you on the street. Oh, I see. But then I came to England in '46, and I've only been living there since. Uh, aren't you um, uh, uh, making a big hit now in a new picture, Espresso Bongo? Well, I don't know if it's a big hit, dear. I know that the girls are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's the one that gave me the trouble about Broadway. It's currently showing here in New York. Yes, off Broadway, but it's off Broadway. It's off Broadway, but it's so difficult to know because uh -huh. I think actually the folks at home would like to understand this. We use Broadway so loosely here in New York that it means in the Broadway area, and to that degree, it was correct. Well, Mr. I know, uh, but I mean, you see, you shouldn't Broadway use it as loosely yeah. as that. That's the trouble with Broadway. It's got well, to be <laughs> 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 yeah, Thank you very much, sir. Nice to have had you as a guest on Let's My Thank you, sir. We've been thinking of putting some road signs up, but we're afraid they'll bump into the road signs, too. And we'll be back after this word from our alternate sponsor. Now until next week, good night, Miss Arlene Francis. Good night, John and Dorothy. Get them to the church on time. <laughs> and good night, Jean-Pierre. It was lovely to have you with us. Good night, Arlene. Have a wonderful trip, and we are all very anxious to read your column because we know you'll give us all the details about Thank the you, wedding. Thank you, Jean-Pierre. Please come again. Good night, Bennett. Have a wonderful time. Thank you, Doris. Same to you. Good night, Marquis. Good night. Dear Cossard, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line? What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Totten.